My heart is broken for the false prophets, full of deceit. I awake with fear and stagger as a drunkard does from wine because of the awful fate awaiting them. For God has decreed holy words of judgment against them. For the land is full of adultery and the curse of God is on it. The land itself is mourning. The pastures are dried up. For the prophets do evil and their power is used wrongly. I'd like us to note at this point in time that when we talk about land and we talk about Israel, we're talking of the church. So let's not think this is an Old Testament thing. God is speaking judgment upon the church as I speak to you now. The priests are like the prophets. All ungodly, wicked men. I have seen their despicable acts right here in my own temple, says the Lord. Therefore their paths will be dark and slippery. They will be chased down dark and treacherous trails and fall. For I will bring evil upon them and see to it when their time has come that they pay their penalty in full for all their sins. I knew the prophets of Samaria were unbelievably evil for they prophesied by Baal and led my people Israel into sin. But the prophets of Jerusalem are even worse. The things they do are horrible. They commit adultery and love dishonesty. We are speaking here of Pentecostal pastors. So I, I, I knew that the priests in the Catholic Church, they, they are horrible. But the ones of Pentecostals are doing is, is, is astounding. I mean, we've, 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 we've seen the Catholic Church and all the, the, the gross, the, the, what do you call them now? Those statements of sexual abuse over, over decades across the world. What the Pentecostal pastors are doing in comparison is nothing. Or rather, in comparison, is, is, is worse. What the Catholic church, what the Catholic priest did is nothing compared to what the Pentecostal churches are doing. The things they do are horrible. They commit adultery and love dishonesty. They encourage and compliment those who are doing evil instead of turning them back from their sins. How can, I mean, how does a pastor talk highly of politicians who are clearly con living contrary to the word of God? Regardless of what they call themselves. How can anybody applaud a politician who is, who is known blatantly to have rigged elections? The videos are there to show it. How can we support such a person? How can we speak so highly of such people? Is it not because we ourselves have gone away from the truth? We don't even know the way of truth anymore. We don't know when God is speaking anymore. We are now becoming judges according to human standards. These prophets are as thoroughly depraved as the men of Sodom and Gomorrah were. Therefore the Lord Almighty says, I will feed them with bitterness and give them poison to drink. For it is because of them that wickedness fills this land. This is my warning to my people, says the Lord Almighty. Don't listen to these false prophets when they prophesy to you, filling you with futile hopes. They are making up everything they say. They, are not, they do not speak for me. They keep saying to these rebels who despise me, don't worry, all is well. And to those who live the way they want to, the Lord has said you shall have peace. How can that be? How do we say to somebody, you know this man is stealing. How do you say it is well with you? How does a man ask you to pray for him? And you did not discuss his sin. And you say you are praying to God. For what? For him to prosper in iniquity? Brethren, there's judgment upon the church and it has started. We're going to hear things that will shock us. Verse 18. But can you name even one of these prophets who lives close enough to God to hear what he's saying? Has even one of them cared enough to listen? See, the Lord is sending a furious whirlwind to sweep away these wicked men. The terrible anger of the Lord will not abate until it has carried out the full penalty he decrees against them. Later, when Jerusalem has fallen, you will see what I mean. Remember one time the Lord Jesus spoke 
And he said, this day, this word is fulfilled in your hearing. And I'm saying to us today, this day, this word is fulfilled and is being fulfilled in our hearing. 21. I have not sent these prophets, yet they claim to speak for me. I gave them no message, yet they say their words are mine. If they were mine, they would try to turn my people from their evil ways. 